Happy Sabbath, dear listener. It is yet another God-given day to rest and praise Him. We will surely help you do that. This is Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. And I'm your presenter, Tilenodiam. This being a special day here at Adventist World Radio, we want to make this program special too. We have exciting and inspiring music lined up for you and also sweet topics of discussion. But first, let us start off by playing sweet music courtesy of Adventist World Radio. Praise of Redeemer, my brother and friend, the Lord and Lord is my Savior. On me His praise and His blessings be said, I'm longing the Savior for thee. Longing the Savior in the world, yes, in the night when Jesus I see. Longing to be Savior with thee, longing. you did enjoy that item. Since our childhood, we have been listening to different Bible stories concerning God's promises. But today, the topic will be a little bit different as we will be discussing God's seven promises in living sound. Enjoy. When Aaron had heard the story Moses had to tell of what he had witnessed upon Mount Horeb, he too became filled with a burning desire to carry out God's command. Together they resolved to carry the word of God unto the people of Israel. And so Moses and Aaron journeyed into Egypt and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. Aaron repeated to them the words the angel had spoken unto Moses and did signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. Aaron and Moses came upon their most difficult task, persuading Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to allow the people to go three days' journey into the wilderness to sacrifice unto the Lord. Uh, uh, Your Majesty, these are the two men that have requested an audience. Audience granted. Now then, what are your names? I am called Moses, Your Majesty. And this is my brother, Aaron. What is it that has brought you before your king? Your majesty, we have been sent to you by our Lord God of Israel. He demands that you let the people go three days' journey into the desert that we might sacrifice in his honor. Oh, and who is this Lord that I should obey his command? I am king of Egypt. I give the commands and the people obey me. 
I will not permit them to leave their daily tasks. Please, Your Majesty, I pray that you'll let us go. Only three days to let us sacrifice. That's all we ask. How is it that you, Moses and Aaron, find time to come here and make such an irresponsible request? Our Lord God of Israel has sent us to carry out his will. You should not anger the Lord our God. Oh, enough of these absurd remarks. Scribe? Uh, yes, Your Majesty. Uh, it seems to me the Israelites are too idle. They do not have enough work to occupy their time, so I'll give them more. But, Your Majesty... Silence! Summon my taskmaster. Yes, Your Majesty. I shall tell them that we will no longer furnish the people's straw with which to make bricks. From this moment on, the Israelites shall gather their own straw, and I will not tolerate any decrease in the number of bricks they produce. You may be certain that I will expect exactly the same number. But, Your Majesty, that is impossible. Your king will decide what is impossible and what is not. And I shall let it be known that anyone who listens to your treasonable talk will be punished. And so, yet another decree of Pharaoh's was forced upon Israel. The Egyptian taskmasters appointed officers among the Hebrews to see that they not only gathered the straw but also made the same number of bricks as before. But the new decree was too harsh. The Israelites were not able to carry it out. Word of this soon reached Pharaoh, and he called for the officers of the children of Israel. Your taskmaster made you officers to see that your workers fulfilled their quota. Why is it they are not producing enough bricks? It's not our fault, Your Majesty. The, the workers travel throughout the land of Egypt searching for straw, and then they have little time at all to complete their work. I will not tolerate excuses. I'll teach you and the rest of the people to regret your idleness. But, Your Majesty, we are never idle. We, have, we always have more than enough work to do. If this were true, you Israelites never would have asked for time to worship your Lord. Take them away, guard. See that they're severely beaten. Pharaoh ordered all the officers of the children of Israel beaten, and the people in turn were worked to exhaustion. It was not long, therefore, before they turned upon Moses and Aaron and blamed them for Pharaoh's hatred and his unreasonable demands. My lord, why hast thou sent me to speak in thy name? Since Aaron and I have spoken to Pharaoh, he has treated the people even more cruelly. Now shalt thou see what the Lord will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand, Pharaoh shall let Israel go to the wilderness. I am an angel of the Lord. I appeared under Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. Say unto the people, The Lord will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. He will redeem you with a stretched out arm. He will bring you in unto the land of Canaan, and he will give it unto you for an inheritance. Hope you got entertained by that story and also did learn something out of it. Let me take this time to thank those who have sent us their views, comments and suggestions about this program. I would also like to urge those who are yet to start sending to do so by writing to the producer, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is Nairobi at eau.adventist.org
day to day lives one should find true value in life by exercising their gifts and understanding on what money is all about by living in an upright way that is required of us we are able to become good stewards Steve Rundu enlightens us more concerning biblical stewardship. Bible. What is biblical stewardship? When you hear the word stewardship, what comes to your mind? If you're thinking of the church, stewardship probably makes you think of money management or debt reduction or even upcoming building campaign. If you're thinking of politics, business, asset management or real estate investment, stewardship probably calls to mind ideas like environmental protection, energy conservation, fiscal accountability, corporate social responsibility, shareholder responsibility, capital management, philanthropic responsibility, or property upkeep. Stewardship is also frequently mentioned in the arena of social transformation and the Christian's responsibility toward those who are poor, abused, disabled, neglected, widowed, or orphaned. To be sure, stewardship is a term with a wide variety of meanings. But what is biblical stewardship? Okay, while most if not all, Christians incorporate the term stewardship into their discussions about Christian responsibility. The definitions and understandings vary greatly across denominational and theological traditions. Some think tithing is the essence of stewardship. Others think embracing a lifestyle of simplicity and fragility in the basic stance of a biblical steward. Some say that biblical stewardship is synonymous with caring for the marginalized, with giving or with the spread of the gospel. Each of these views are essential components of biblical stewardship, but each of its own falls shy of capturing the full panoramic vision of the privilege and responsibility of stewardship illuminated in the Bible. At no time in Scripture do we ever read about God relinquishing His ownership of anything He created. If we read Psalms, Chapter 24 from verse 1 all the way to 2, it will remind us, and I quote, The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. God's sovereign right to his creation is further enforced by Psalm chapter 50 from verse 10 to verse 12. For every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains and the creatures of the field are mine, for the world is mine and all that is in it. God reminds us of his continued ownership over everything he has set in motion in at least four ways. God spoke all things, seen and unseen, into existence. Two, God maintains a position of authority over creation. 3. God exercises discretionary control over creation. And 4. God commissions stewards to enact His will. God is not the who of stewardship. We are managing for the living God. Other people or organizations may benefit along the way as we become effective stewards. But our primary responsibility is to the one who who entrusted us all things into our care. The significance of stewardship. God's word is filled with examples of various kinds of stewards, effective and ineffective, faithful and unfaithful, wise and unwise. It describes the stewards and consequences associated with the quality of the stewardship. It conveys the mercy, grace and justice of God as he deals with the stewards. It points us to both the privilege and the responsibility of stewardship. It details specific stewardship expectations and outlines broad stewardship principles. Now, stewardship is a central theme throughout Scripture. Like the fundamental Christian themes of creation, 
fall, redemption, and consummation, the subject of stewardship is woven throughout Scripture. God has called you to be His steward. You have been commissioned as a manager in trust of a God's estate. Brothers, when God created us, human beings, Adam and Eve, He put them to be in charge. He gave them dominion over everything He had created. That was the beginning of stewardship. If you look at stewardship as a trustee relationship between you and God, you being the manager in trust over God's estate, then that will be the biblical look or the biblical view on stewardship. We will be going through a series of stewardship and this was to introduce what is really stewardship in terms of biblical thought. Let us have a prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be the name. Father, you are the creator of all that we have. The earth, the seas beneath, the skies above, and all that is in it, including us. Father, teach us how to be good stewards. Teach us how to be responsible with our lives, to be responsible and accountable with the monies that you've given to us, to be responsible and accountable for the time that you've given unto us. In everything, Lord, let us learn how to return to you what belongs to you and to use the remaining effectively, for we are just but managers in trust for your estate. Teach us how to be good stewards, for we have prayed, trusting and believing in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. time and attention. In case of any views, comments, or suggestions about the program, do so by writing to the producer, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.org. On behalf of those who worked to ensure this program has reached you, we say thank you and wish you a glorious Sabbath. Stay tuned to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. I have been your host, Tileno Diam. Praise of Redeemer, my brother and friend, Dear Lord and Lord is my Savior, On me His praise and His blessings be said, I'm longing a Savior for thee, Longing a Savior and longing for thee, Testing the bright when Jesus I see, Longing to be Savior with thee,
Join me. 
Savior. On me this place and this place in this earth, I'm longing to save you for this. Longing to save you in the morning, testing the moment when Jesus I see. Longing to be Savior with me. Savior with the Lord. 